So guys, uh, we were talking about the Mount Union offense versus the Mary Harden Baylor defense, and in doing so, uh, we should at this point talk about a player that should have been on the Mary Harden Baylor defense this season, but unfortunately is not. Uh, that is Tevin Jones, linebacker. Uh, he would have been a senior this year for Mary Hunt Baylor. He was an All-American uh, last year. A really breakout season for him. And uh, because of an episode, uh, he'll explain in our interview coming up here, uh, he is not with the team as of August uh, 21st, I think it was. Uh, he was uh, dismissed after uh, suggesting he was going to transfer. And uh, we will let him uh, put in his own words, give us a break for a second as well. But we'll come back and talk about this also. We'll have a uh, reaction from Coach Fredenberg about some of the questions that got raised in this interview. So again, this is uh, Tevin Jones from uh, earlier this week. Uh, I talked to him on Tuesday, and here it is. So Tev, you know, last year, about a year ago, Mary Harden Baylor back in the Stag Bowl. Mm -hmm. That was kind of your breakout year. Mm -hmm. It's the last time a lot of people saw you on the field. Take me through that game. I, that was a cold one, mm -hmm. and uh, Mary Harden Baylor lost it 12 to nothing. But tell me, tell me about the excitement of that game, and you know your memories of it. Um, well, yeah, you kind of hit it on the head. It was a cold one, and so I mean, I knew right then and there it was going to be a battle, just kind of fighting that. But I mean, it was exciting in the fact that I, I was a starter, and I know I was going to play a huge role. Me and Coach Fredenberg actually kind of had a little conversation before the game. He was like, you know, I could see this really being a big game for you, and so I kind of went into it with some nerves, but. Um, Overall, it was a great experience. You know, we didn't come out the way we wanted it to, but um, just to be on that stage, you know, kind of the pinnacle, especially for Division Three, you know, having a chance to play on ESPN, um, it was a memory for sure. So that was the last time we saw you on the mm -hmm. field. You did not play in 2018. Uh, some uh, things transpired. Uh, you mm -hmm. were, you know, getting ready for this season. And uh, then uh, what uh, basically uh, our paths crossed uh, mm -hmm. during uh, kind of a, a tweet storm of sorts that uh, you uh, sort of went through. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I'm going to read uh, one in particular from uh, kind of August 21st or 20th, uh, 2018. And it's, quote, just to air it out, I'm transferring from UMHB without getting into too much detail. The coaches want me to lie for them and take the fall for something that didn't happen. Mm -hmm. Karma is MF, by the way. So, okay, let, let's lead into what led to that mm -hmm. first and then what transpired subsequent to that. So what happened? Why, why this tweet in the first place? Um, so just to state, it was really an, an emotional kind of fueled tweet in response to everything. But <clears throat> so right before fall camp, I believe the Thursday before fall camp, um, me and my buddy go out and um, we only go to, we went to one bar, so to speak, and um, didn't have much to drink. And I guess it had triggered a uh, psychosis. And basically a psychosis is a disconnect from reality in a sense. And you just kind of have delusions about everything. And so um, that kind of led to me running into some legal issues. I ended up getting arrested that same night. And so um, I ran into some legal issues and I ended up missing the start of fall camp. Uh, I, so fall camp was that following Saturday. And so I missed that. I missed reporting day and um, I sit down with the staff or I sit down with Coach Fred, the administration, and we just kind of go through the details of that night. And um, uh, I've, I was at the time thinking I had been drugged and that it wasn't, it didn't stem from a psychosis, but it, it, it was psychosis. And so um, Coach Fredenberg wanted me to come out and get in front of, get in front of the whole thing before speculation went out and just kind of own up to it and you know kind of admit that there was some fault in there on my part and <clears throat> I was just at the time so emotional I didn't feel like I had I had made a mistake and I, I genuinely felt like I had been drugged just because of the way things transpired and the way I had the way it kind of led on to stuff that I wouldn't actually do in my right mindset and so I just felt like I was drugged but that wasn't the case and so um, I kind of came out and with those emotional fuel tweets and it was uh, just said some things that just weren't true and I really kind of regret it. So, 
The school uh, subsequently, uh, I think after some <coughs> other things that may have transpired uh, immediately following the tweet storm, um, they uh, disassociated with you mm -hmm. essentially, so, uh, stated that you were no longer enrolled. How did that make you feel and did that sort of cause you to get seek help immediately or did it actually cause the ball to keep rolling down that mountain a little bit faster and harder? Um, I think at the time it caused the ball to just kind of keep rolling. Um, I hadn't really got a grip on my emotions just yet. Um, I was still really emotional about just not playing ball and kind of just the response I was getting. And um, so it was just an emotional fueled thing. And just whenever I, whenever they came out, my dad was the one who kind of told me like they were taking down my thing on the field house because I got elected captain. And so I was just like, man, it's just one thing after another. And so it just really just mounted everything else that already went ha went down. So Now you, uh, for a lot of folks that don't know, are uh, basically a forever native of uh, the Belton, mm -hmm. Texas area. I went to Belton High School, which is right down the street from uh, Mary Harden Baylor. Um, you've been staying with the grandparents, I understand, mm -hmm. uh, who've uh, been tremendous in trying to be support for you. Mm -hmm. What finally triggered you seeking, let's say, some sort of help here mm -hmm. with what you identify as, as psychosis? So um, a few weeks had passed and things didn't really progress as far as me getting over the emotional part of it and kind of I was still experiencing some delusions and everything. And eventually I just one day, one morning I woke up and just kind of had a mental breakdown, so to speak. and kind of went on a rampage, if you will, in their backyard and just destroyed some things. And um, that was just kind of the straw. <clears throat> and my family was like, okay, you need help. And I went and checked in into a facility for about two weeks in Georgetown. And that's when I kind of got the help I needed and got on the right meds and everything. And so they had initially, they had came out and diagnosed it as uh, schizophrenia, but I mean, that's kind of, that diagnosis hasn't really been, they kind of threw that out the window when they realized, you know, I didn't really exhibit any signs of, or symptoms of schizophrenia or anything like that. They kind of wanted to put it up as far as being bipolar more so. And at the time it was more the right diagnosis because I was still kind of experiencing a flurry of emotions and having these excessive highs and excessive lows. And so, um, but that event in itself was still psychosis nonetheless. So I got the help I needed from that facility and now I'm on the right meds right now. How confident are you that you're on the right path? What, what are you doing uh, besides taking meds that makes you feel more assured that this is something of the past and that the future is much brighter for you? Um, just the fact that I've kind of had time to sit back and really take a look at things and how they transpired and know that I was in the wrong in some aspects and especially the aspect of um, coming out and saying the things that I said about the school, about the coach and then wanting me to lie like that wasn't true. And um, I just knew it was a part of myself and is becoming a man is one of those things is owning up to your mistakes and that was something that I needed to do and so this was the first step. Now uh, Tuff has talked to Coach Fredenberg uh, since uh, the events uh, and how has that gone? Uh, what is his response been to you generally? Um, it's always been nothing but love from Coach Fred and that's kind of how it was in the beginning but his response was just like I thought it was something chemically going on with you and um, that was kind of the thought of a lot of people around me and he was just like um, I wanted I wanted this to be like your year just as much as you wanted it to be and um, I just kind of I hate that things happen the way they did but he's he's kind of he's always embraced me with open arms with all my issues that I've had so after uh, some of the discussions you had, uh, you posted on Instagram and uh, quoting you again, this was from uh, November 29th, so uh, not that long ago. Uh, this year by far has been the most challenging mentally, physically, spiritually, and emotionally. I was really forced to take a step back from life and make God a priority and deal with issues that come back to haunt me. Back in August, I experienced a second bout with psychosis and it threw off everything that I worked for. It caused me to do, say and do things that wasn't me whatsoever. In the process, I made a statement about the coaching staff at UMHB that wasn't true and was basically a result of an emotional response from my psychosis. I've since made amends with Coach Fredenberg and apologized for the whole ordeal. 
So you wrote that, um, and it seems like you're trying to take a step mm -hmm. to the future at this point. Would you like to return to Mary Hardin Baylor at some point in time and continue your football career? You have a year of eligibility mm -hmm. left, obviously. Um, I would I would love to, honestly. Um, just kind of finish what I started. I know this kind of wrench kind of put a dampen on things, but I would love to return. Um, I love that school. I love the relationships that I've built there, um, just the environment, the people, and especially being in my hometown. Um, I've experienced nothing but support and love from that whole school system, and so I just returning would returning would be in my best interest, especially for school, considering I've only got a year left in my studies, and so just wanting to finish out with that team and with that coaching staff and. Um, just finishing my degree would be something I'd love to do. Let's say you had an opportunity to talk to Dr. O'Rare, uh, who is the president of UMHB. Mm -hmm. so, you know, he may have some role in this decision as much as anybody. Mm -hmm. What would you say to him right now about what's happened in the last few months and you know what the future could be instead of the past? Um, I would just kind of express to him like my regrets for one, kind of what I initially came out and said, and then pitch to him the what I've done as far as taking my steps and further and doing my best to become a better person and address the issues that I haven't necessarily addressed in the past so that these don't these same symptoms and issues don't continue to pop up so for anybody out there that would say that you've been disassociated with the team for the last mm -hmm. few months and you know you haven't been necessarily supportive you may have been more of a problem than a benefit to this team mm -hmm. this year have you been in communication with your teammates and what has their reaction been over the last few months? Um, yeah, I've definitely, I've stayed in contact with a lot of the guys on the team and um, it's just been, they've been supportive of me the whole time. I mean, they, under, they understood that, you know, it was just something that I wasn't myself in the whole situation and they, they always expressed to me how much they loved me and they wished I was on the team. And so, I mean, I would send them texts before games, just encouraging them, saying, just go out there and finish kind of what we started from three, four years ago, so. I want to thank you uh, for joining us, uh, first and foremost, mm -hmm. and we all want to wish you luck on what's next for you. Obviously, you're trying to put the past to the past mm -hmm. and look forward uh, with the lessons intact. And so, uh, it's going to be quite a journey. And uh, looking back at that 2017 season, nobody should ever doubt your skill and mm -hmm. your drive on the football field. So let's see what happens. Uh, first, we'll get through the stag bowl. Any predictions? Um, I'm going to go with 28-17 uh, crew. Now, you, you were talking with D'Angelo Fulford a little bit uh, in the past, so um, D'Angelo may be offended by that. He he might be, but um, D'Angelo, man, he's he's his own kind of player. I mean, I think he's somebody that you definitely got to sit down and game plan for. I mean, he's special with, with the ball, and so um, I think if, we, if we're not on our P's and Q's, I mean, he'll attack us and hit those weak spots, so. We'll see what happens, see. and then uh, after this game, we'll see what's next for everybody uh, involved with Mary Harden Baylor. All righty. And again, that was Tevin Jones uh, talking about uh, what happened in the summer and then uh, throughout the season when he was not able to play with his team. We also got a comment from Coach Fredenberg concerning whether or not uh, Tevin would have a chance possibly in the future with Mary Harden Baylor. Coach, uh, Tevin Jones, I got to sit down with him and he's uh, told me about kind of his uh, remorse for what happened uh, before the season and told me about some of the conversations that he's had with you since that point. You've been very supportive, it sounds like, of him and the things that he's been doing to improve himself and deal with his own issues. Uh, what is your view right now of Tevin uh, and is it a, a player that hopefully someday maybe could come back to Mary Harden Baylor, do you think? You know, that would be a decision that obviously the, the administration would have to make, but I think that Tevin, it, it, I have always loved Tevin and that has never changed. The person that I saw twice in his lifetime was a, was a guy that was his, his chem, chemical, he was unbalanced and I don't know why, I don't know what caused it, but he is getting help with it, and, and that, that makes me very happy for him. Uh, he is a, a well thought of, he's a bright youngster, he's got a, so many positive things going for him, I certainly don't want something like this to 
keep him from achieving his goals. So, guys, uh, let's talk a little bit. Uh, and we got some news to break as well about uh, some of the warm-ups going on behind us. Uh, but, uh, you know, you always want to see somebody that takes the right steps in their lives to at least get another chance uh, if they do the right things. It seems like Tevin has done the right things along the way, Adam. Yeah, and it's remarkable uh, how this defense has played so well without him. You know, we thought, you know, in, in kickoff, he was my preseason defensive player of the year in the nation. I thought he'd be the best defensive player in the country uh, anchoring this defensive middle linebacker. And the fact that they've had such a dominant season uh, leading the nation in scoring defense is really a testament to how his team rallied in his absence. Tevin, uh, thank you for not giving him a point on that one, I guess. But uh, unfortunately, <laughs> it came at uh, some uh, cost of your own personal uh, livelihood uh, this season. And uh, Greg, what are your thoughts as we uh, exit out? On this part of the interview you know uh, Tevin's story to me uh, helps put some perspective on the game like we're, we're here covering football game and we're you know we take this very seriously but it is a game and all of these players and Tevin included like first and foremost take care of yourself be healthy be well uh, you know be accountable be you know uh, you know Tevin has shown accountability and maturity and you know if he gets back to my heart in Baylor and gets to complete his eligibility you know, that's a great story. Well, well uh, we will have more on that, I'm sure, as the offseason uh, happens. We'll see if uh, Mirhar and Baylor does give him another chance and keep you updated on that.